Hi y'all, thank you so much for tuning in once again to Mama Sanity. Um, I'm excited about um, sharing these stories with you today. Um, the reason being is, have you ever felt like you've just had a day, a week, a season, several months of one step forward and about 20 steps back? Okay, and you feel like you're just pushing and pushing and pushing. It's like kind of like running on a treadmill and you just, you're not getting anywhere and you feel like, ugh. Okay, so that's what kind of, I guess, long season I've been in. It's just something good happens, and then it's 20 steps backwards, and then something good happens, and it's 20 steps backwards. And it, and in a lot of sermons that I've been watching of Stephen Ferdinick, and I've known this all along, um, but it's really, really hit me hard. And I'm actually getting excited that I'm being attacked by the enemy. And I know that kind of sounds weird, but just kind of stay with me for a minute. So... If the enemy is not attacking you, then you, there's nothing good fixing to happen. There's nothing, you know what I'm saying? So I've heard oh, with several people over and over and over again, your miracle and your breakthrough is fixing to come through when? When it just feels like you want to give up. When it feels like the world's just falling apart. When it feels like, oh, I can't take it anymore. Seriously? Like, that's when the enemy just the enemy knows that you're fixing to have your breakthrough. I guess so. I keep getting attacked, and it's like little attacks here and there. You know, this breaks. I cut my finger, and this happens, and this happens, and this happens, and, and it's just like over and over and over. And my husband told me um, the other day that he felt the same way, and he kind of just laughed and shrugged it on and told told the enemy like, "Bring it on, dude." And that's kind of what I have to say is. Is that all you got? Bring it on, because my God's bigger and my God's stronger. And so I'm really pumped and really excited. Um, to, I'm gonna, going to read a prayer and then read two stories of encouragement. And it just at the end of the day, it's just all about the attitude that we have on what's going on. So let me get started. Dear God, I pray for your encouragement to light my path today. I humbly ask for a renewal of hope within me. Forgive me for the times of doubt and getting caught up in my self-pity. I know it is not you. Lord, I pray for someone to help today. Put them before me and help me to make a difference in their life. I pray about my impatience and my anxiety. Oh Lord, calm me down. Steady me and please guide every step that I take and every decision I must make today and every day throughout. Watch over me and keep me from harm. In Jesus' name, amen. I wanted that prayer because it kind of covers the basis of everything. Yes, I still am stressed. Yes, I still worry. Yes, I still have anxiety. And like I've told y'all several times before, that is something that I'm working on a daily basis. So this prayer helps me as today guide my steps. Today, forgive me for my anxiety and forgive me for my worry and help me crush the enemy. Whatever he's throwing at me today, I know that it's meant for my good and you'll help me to overcome it. So I really like that prayer. This next story is really cool. Um, it's called The Brick. About 10 years, uh, sorry, about a 10 year old, young, very successful, sorry. About 10 years ago, a very young successful executive named Josh was traveling down a Chicago neighborhood street. He was going a bit too fast in his sleek black 12-cylinder Jaguar XKE, which was only two months old. I have no idea what kind of car that is. He was watching for kids starting out from between the parked cars and slowed down when he thought he saw something. As his car passed, no child darted out, but a brick sailed out of nowhere. Boom! Smash! Into the Jag, shiny black side door. Screech! Brakes slammed on, gears ground into reverse, and tires madly spun the Jag back into the spot from where the brick had been thrown. Josh jumped out of the car, grabbed the kid, pushed him up against the parked car, and he shouted at the kid, what was that all about? Who are you? What the heck are you doing? Building up a head of steam, and he went on, That's my new Jag! That brick you threw is going to cost you a lot of money. Why did you do that? I can imagine how frustrating he would be. 
Please, mister, please, I'm so sorry. I didn't know what else to do, pleaded the youngster. I threw the brick because no one else would stop and help me. Tears were dripping down the boy's face as he pointed around the parked car. It's my brother, mister, he said. He rolled off the curb and fell out of his wheelchair, and I can't lift him up. He's too heavy. Sobbing, the boy asked, would you please help me get him back into his wheelchair? He is hurt, and he's way too heavy for me to pick up. Moved beyond words, the young executive tried desperately to swallow the rapidly swelling lump in his throat. Straining, he left the young man back into the wheelchair and took out the handkerchief and wiped his scrapes and cuts, checking to see if everything was going to be okay. Then he watched the younger brother push him down the sidewalk toward their home. It was a long walk back to that black, sleek, shiny, 12-cylinder Jaguar XKE. A long, slow walk. Josh never did fix that side door to his Jag. He kept the dent to remind him not to go through life so fast that someone has to throw a brick at him to get his attention. Some bricks are softer than others. Feel for the bricks of your life coming out at you. In the hustle and bustle of the speed of life, are you missing out on the joys of the present moment? Slow down, enjoy life. It's not the only scenery that you miss when you're going too fast. You also miss the sense of where you were going and why. Quote, forget who hurt you yesterday, but don't forget those who love you every day. Forget the past that makes you cry and focus on the present that makes you smile. Forget the pain, but never the lessons that you have gained. I, I really like that story and I wanted to share it with y'all because it's like, wow, it's powerful. And yes, I am one of those hustle and bustle, rush, got to get, you know, my husband and kids call me the tornado and I'm got to get this done. And I got 50 million things. I got to do this and do that and do that with the kids, especially with summer with all the kids being home. And it's, you know, I'm my oldest son, we go on bike rides every day because he's fixing to start band camp. And then my other son says, oh, well, I want to spend time with you. And then my other two, I want to spend just one-on-one -on -one time. And, and then my husband feels left out and then the dog and then there's dinner and there's clothes and there's the kitchen that can be cleaned. And, so it's, I am totally firsthand know what it's like to rush and hustle and bustle and get this done and get that done. But what I like about this story is he didn't fix that dent in his beautiful new Jaguar that he thought was so important before this happened. He kept that dent as a reminder as, you know, he's successful and he's got this new Jag and he's just cruising through life and bam, a brick for this poor little boy whose brother fell out of a wheelchair and to help you. So it's the little things that you miss, um, just the hustle and bustle. And I'm totally 150 million percent guilty of that. I'm constantly trying to just get through my day of all the 50 million things I have. And that's why I like the story is because it's a big slap in the face for me saying, Brandy, slow down, breathe, be still. So there's one other story that I wanna read to y'all that I really like and then I'll let y'all go. It's called The Troubles Tree. The carpenter I hired to help me restore an old farmhouse had just finished a rough first day on the job. A flat tire made him lose an hour of work, his electric saw quit, and now an ancient pickup truck refused to start. While I drove him home, he sat in a stony silence. On arriving, he invited me in to meet his family. As we walked toward the front door, he paused briefly at a small tree, touching the tips of the branches with both hands. After opening the door, he underwent an amazing transformation. He changed his face, and what was worried turned into smiles as he hugged his two small children and gave his wife a kiss. Afterwards, he walked me out to the car. We passed the tree, and my curiosity got the best of me. I asked, what I had seen him do earlier. Oh, that's my trouble tree, he replied. I know I can't help having troubles in life, and trouble, but troubles do not belong in the house with my wife and children. So I hang them on the tree every night, and in the morning, I go and pick them up again. Funny thing is, he smiled, when I come out in the morning to pick up them up, there aren't as merely as many as I had remember hanging up the night before. Whoa. 
I need a trouble tree, okay? And it trees just metaphorically, like it could be anything. I have a huge habit and we all do. My, my husband does, my kids do, um, everybody I know, they have a bad day and they bring that home with them. So there's several times that, you know, it's just been nonstop shouting and arguing with the kids and I'm hustle and bustling, like I said before, and going through my day and that puts me in a bad mood. My husband's been gone all day at work. He had nothing to do with it, but I start nagging and raging on him and ah, yeah. I like this story because the story says, lay your troubles down. You are gonna have troubles. You're gonna have lots of troubles and it's all in how you handle them. And I'm not telling you all this today because I'm great at it and I'm perfect at it because I'm not. I'm having a hard time doing it, but I'm trying my best and I'm trying to help encourage y'all that I am the most worrisome, anxious, planned, organized, like if things don't go a certain way, I'm like, ah, and I'm really, really trying to work on that. So if I can do this, I know that y'all can do this and encourage people and help people and just look around like on the bike rides my son's always like why do we always have to go on this one bike ride and i'm like because i love the nature i love the trees i love the beauty and it's my time to just relax and look at the beautiness that god created and this is something that i'm really really going to try and do because it's not my children's fault it's not my husband's fault it's not my family's fault that things you know come in and at me throughout the day and get me anxious and rah, rah. and so i need to learn to just hang up my troubles and say i'm going to smile and act like the day has just been wonderful and beautiful because my family deserves the best and so do you so i hope that y'all have a wonderful week and until next time stay tuned and stay sane